Yo, yo, what's up, brother? Hello. What's going on, man? Yo, what's up? How's it going? Been good, bro. Doing good. It's uh, got home from the beach not too long ago, so nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I saw your video on Instagram. That was that was sick. That drone shot. I got lucky, man. It's one of those things that um, I, you know, I've been flying the drone there the past three days surfing, and I went back to fly like the I like I usually fly after I surf, and I was like, what can I yeah. shoot differently today? You know, me just trying to push myself. So, like, let me try these different camera angles. And I pan down and see this chick with the surfboard. I'm like, oh, this is fucking perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, and that shadow, right? The sunlight. It's, I, it's just so cool to just, you know, see a different perspective. And I show, like, two of my friends. And they're like, they're like, I'm looking at somebody at the beach. And then they're like, oh, that's a shadow of someone looking at the beach. I'm like, <laughs> so, like, I was like, oh, no, I'm not happy with that. Uh, That's so dope, man. There's that, you follow, what's this guy's name? There's one dude that does a lot of shit like this. I was, like, inspired to, uh, I think it starts an A. What is it? Uh, he just does drone stuff? Nah, he does a bunch of different, like, but he does, like, some, like, epic shit. What's, mm. let me look up Bunny. You know, there's so many people you follow that, you know, at some points you just forget, like, all the different usernames. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get that. I follow a lot of, like, FPV people. I've, I've been starting to uh -huh. now, and I'm just like, they all they all kind of do the same thing, so it's kind of hard to remember who's who. Yeah, uh, Kyle Huber, I think is Essence of Huber. Oh, I don't think I follow that guy. He does like a bunch of stuff like this. I saw he did this the other day. Oh damn! Yeah, so he's always doing stuff like that. He does like a lot of like I love stop motion stuff like this. This is the kind of stuff that like you know I actually enjoy creating versus like shooting. Yeah. Of it. Um, yeah. So like, like, like hyperlapse sort of stuff. Yeah, hyperlapse stuff like that. But like you know, he's just somebody out here that's just fucking you know grinding away just being creative like and i think that's the mix of it all like you know i started shooting videos because i used to like just going out and having fun and shooting videos but then at some point yeah. you're like okay i gotta pay the bills now so you know i stopped doing the music videos and more the events and i started i got more into the corporate thing but then i see somebody like kyle that's out here working with like honda working with dji you know what i mean it's just like man if you really put yourself out there and hustle it, you know, those doors can open up for you. There's, you know, you don't have to, you know, I don't mind shooting corporate stuff, but like, you know, obviously like he's definitely somebody that's killing it out there that I'm like, damn, this is where I love to be, you know, yeah. as a full-time content creator. <clears throat> you're really creating just the content that you want. You know, there's not yeah, yeah. much about like, you know, you're creating for your client or somebody else type shit, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm in, I'm kind of in the same boat where I'm like, damn, right now, you know, I need to pay the bills, so I need to get some corporate clients that actually have money to, to put in my bank account. But you know, you see all this like cool content. Like, I follow a bunch of cool brands, um, and I'm like, damn, I want to make that kind of content, but like, that's a long way away. So it's kind of like it's just staying grounded right now for me. So, so well, uh, I'm recording this, so uh, I get is that cool with you? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, awesome. totally not. Um, yeah, so I mean, can you just, for everybody that could possibly be watching this on YouTube, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? What are you doing? What kind of projects you're working at? I just have a background so we can go dive, uh, dive in and I can help you figure out whatever it is that you know, I could possibly help you with. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, so basically, a little background story um, on what I'm doing now. Um, I'm from Hong Kong, so... I actually moved out to Sydney, where I am right now, um, earlier this year, around February, um, because, you know, I just wanted to change the scenery. Um, I'm sure you've heard there was a lot of, like, political stuff going on back in Hong Kong and yeah. a lot of negativity. I just kind of wanted to get out of that and start fresh. Um, so I moved over here to Sydney. My girlfriend's here studying at um, University of Sydney, um, and I decided to start my freelance um, video business. So... I got here in February. I was like, yo, I'm eager to go. I'm eager to like find some um, clients. And then COVID hit around like mid-March over here. So it was kind of a tough timing, but you know, things happen and you have to be prepared for it. So 
um, during this like kind of lockdown period, um, it was kind of like I was finding it difficult to reach out to people because people were just, you know, very, very conservative. Um, so what I did was I was just like building on my on my portfolio, on my skill set. Um, I started my um, business uh, Instagram account and uh, that did pretty well for me. Um, I grew my account from like zero to 3K in like a couple, three months or something like that. Um, but what I noticed is that it wasn't actually like getting me quality leads really. Like people were coming to me with like small odd jobs in there, like logo animations and stuff. And I was like, um, maybe I should actually like really go out there and, and put myself out there more. So after this COVID period kind of like slowly faded away, um, I started reaching out to more people, cold approach email, um, and just like trying to build my network here. And uh, that's where it leads me now. I'm like kind of in the situation where, you know, I moved from Sydney, COVID hit, I didn't have a big chance to go out and network. So I don't really have much of a <clears throat> connected network here. So it's hard to me to, it's hard for me to kind of go out there and rely on those referrals and stuff like that. So I've been primarily like cold outreaching businesses, um, which, you know, has been a little tough, but you know, there were some, good leads that I got out of it. Um, so now I'm in the process of just um, getting that work done and getting that stuff in my portfolio and then just expanding from there. Um, but yeah, the reason why, you know, like, well, I mean, the main question I have for you is like, I see what you're doing with your sales stuff and that's kind of where um, it really caught my attention because no one, no one else in the industry, I feel like was doing it how you were doing it, like how you prospect your clients. Um, so I noticed like you were doing all that cool stuff with the marketing agencies. Um, you're making like free valuable content for dentists and stuff. So I kind of want to ask you about like the intricacies of those, of those kind of conversations and how those would actually play out, um, from like beginning to end. So I want to so, see. Oh, um, so have you seen the other two YouTube videos I put out like last week? Um, I might have, which ones were those? There, there are two client calls. Uh, one. That, yeah, I think I saw them. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I mean, that helps a lot. So um, here's the thing with dentists, and it sucks. I actually had a, a, actually probably one of my favorite calls I've had with somebody. The audio for my new camera was it's it's so it's like if you really want to listen to it, there's some great stuff, but the audio quality is so bad. I'm like, I can't publish this because it's just <laughs> like I could probably do a brief on it, but like we dove we did a good deep dive into this whole thing with somebody else and i guess it's yeah. that for me to realize you know when i'm talking to a lot of people is that have you shot interviews before um yes i have how my last were you shooting interviews and editing dialogue um i'm pretty okay with it i mean like it's always difficult i feel like with the type of talent that you have like kind of being the person that prompts them um, but I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm actually okay with shooting interviews and, and yeah, doing that dialogue stuff. Okay, cool. What's your website? Um, Gerard, Tam, so G E R A R D T A M R D T A M dot com. Cool. Did you have content marketing solution presentation? Oh, where did you design this at? I'm sorry. How did you design this website? Like, uh, oh, I did it on, on Wix. Wix, okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Contact. Um, so like around just doing some basic stuff, looking at, I see this all the time with a, a lot of uh, people that they launch their websites and then on yeah. they have the contact us page and then not have a phone number or an email or just a, all they normally have is just a form for them to fill out. And that's one of those things yeah. that uh, the only other thing I'll tell you is put your actual business email on here because if a client needs to get a hold of you and you know, they might call you, but if they could just email you, cause like for me, if I need to reach to a business, I'd rather send out an email to somebody than versus fill out a form and wait for that form to, you know, someone to get back to me at least emailing somebody to me gives them that option if they really want to reach me um you know they can do that but other than that, okay, yeah for sure 
Um, something else that I'll do on this page is, um, I feel like I should show people what I'm talking about. Let me bring this up real quick. Um, G-E-A-R, G-E-A-R-D. Share screen. Um, cool. digital content marketing solution design. So I think here, uh, yeah. so if I was to do it, I will probably move your name. I wouldn't have it so far at the top. It'd be more of like a mm. logo on the side. And then I'll change this digital content marketing solutions design to an un unleash your brand. Um, in a sense, I think the slogan is, it's fresh, but it's when you're talking to a business owner, it needs to be like very specific about what is it you do. So like we just changed ours to, I think it is like um, video production for all your business needs. Like if you're like, if you're a small business and you need a video, we can help you shoot it. Simple okay. as that for someone that, you know, so it says digital content, what kind of digital content are you doing? Are you doing graphic design? Are you doing photos? Are you, are you doing videos? So it could be a lot of different things. So I think for a lot of people, especially, and it's hard to, bro, because I've been there, you know, when I started, yeah. out, I did photos, I did videos, but it's one of those things that the more you can start, and I still need to niche down myself, but the more that you can start niching down, it's easier for you to separate yourself from other people to do everything else. You know, in the sense of yeah. client comes to me like, hey, can you do photos too? I'm like, no, I don't do photos. I, I have videos. I can hire a photographer for you that I work with to be part of this. But if you want to work with me, I specialize in doing videos. It's like that, it really helps minimize that, you know, you're a general, journalist and you do everything. You know, I'll still do photos and stuff like that. But for my website, I want to let the business owners know that like, hey, if you come to my website, like we do videos for you. That's our main thing. So okay. kind of have it like, gotcha. you know, as a top of a banner. I look at my website for reference. Um, mm. Can you see my screen or no? Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. So like, you know, video production for all your business needs, whether you're looking to boost traffic, increase sales, or connect with customers, we can help. Like very straight to the point, video production, yeah. video production. We are Tesla Studios, video production agency specializing in corporate videos and TV commercials for brands and local businesses. Like I'm just reinsuring that throughout the whole thing. And the other thing that I started doing now, I actually just finished this, is um, you know, I'm really niching down on talking to my people that I want to you know, so I, I literally made a, a a landing page, a landing page on my website just for dentists so like you know yeah then that'll connect with patients grow your practice so it's very different when you start talking to you know if a dentist comes here it's not like hey business owner we're helping you grow your business i'm like yo i'm yeah. helping you grow your practice i'm speaking directly to them so you know looking i didn't get a chance to look through all your work but you know if you're doing a lot of sports stuff i literally write like we make kick-ass sports content for your brand um mm. figure out what is it that um um sorry you know who matthew, no you know who matthew messina is yeah oh wait who matthew messina he's one of the creative executives at the future and do you follow oh, matthew and cena yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah you follow yeah. the future yeah yeah a lot actually okay, so cool. matthew is one of the like creative directors of blind right yeah he was messaging me telling me so i get I, I still get like the fact that i'm in a circle of people like Christo and Matthew is still like blows my mind, bro. Like yeah. that if you just put yourself out there, like shit like that would, uh, you know, it, it happens, but it's still like, yeah. you know, freaking psychs me out. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so it's, what kind of stuff do you like shooting? Um, well, yeah, like I, I'm used to shooting this kind of like fitness, cool, like cinematic, if you want to call it like content um for fitness businesses okay. um 
but obviously like I, I've, I've consumed a bunch of your content and I totally agree. Like you have to be selective with who you choose to partner with, right? Because um, different businesses have different budgets and they can only justify the price of a video if they compare it to how much their, their customer or customer lifetime value is, right? That's so with fitness, with fitness businesses, it's, it's just a little hard to kind of justify the price sometimes which I've been having kind of trouble with. So that's why I've been kind of trying to branch out into, into other areas just to see if it's a little easier to, to you know, so sell myself. I, so I personally don't think that the fitness industry is a bad industry to be at, especially yeah. when it comes to like high-end gyms and like personal training and stuff like that. Cause like some people charge you know, 150 bucks a session type thing, like, you know, $150 a month to be part of those gyms. So, mm. you know, what I'll look into, and I think the other thing to, um, to like this, is this a photo? Okay. Yeah, that's just a photo. Is this part of like a whole marketing campaign that they were doing? Yeah. So basically everything on here is from the business I was working for back in Hong Kong before I came out here. And it's just like a full video marketing campaign um, based around this like boutique boxing gym. So what I'll do if I was you, I'll create a, I'll create a page for this. that would be called mm -hmm. like gym case study. And it'd be like, Hey, I'm offering, and I don't know, like, what are, what are video rates going for? I don't, is, is it the same rates as, like, America when it comes to video production? What are people charging in Australia? Um, I think it's a little less compared to what I've seen in the U.S. Um, so, like, for me right now, I'm kind of at the 2K Australian mark, which I think is, I think is around, like, 1,300, 1,400 U.S. dollars. Uh -huh. um, yeah and is that like the going rate in your industry or like um well you know i've talked to a bunch of people here a bunch of like um other videographers and stuff and it's kind of varied like some people do a day rate uh -huh. um and well a lot of people do day rates and half day rates and from what i've heard like senior like they work in agencies so like senior uh directors senior designers apparently or are, are, should be charging around like 900 Australian dollars for, um, their day rate. for their day rate. Yeah. Um, so when I came to Australia, I was like looking, I was researching and all the people um, that I was looking at were doing um, their day rates in, in us dollars. So I was like, Oh, maybe I can like um, cater to, to that kind of price range. And I got here and I realized that, you know, it's, it's not the same here in Australia. Like everything's a little, a little more affordable. Um, so something that I did in the past is, and this is kind of a hack for anyone that's watching to figure out what people are doing in your area. Spend the dollar or two dollars, whatever it is. How big is Craigslist over there? Uh, not not that big, I don't think. We use something else. I think it's called Gumtree. So okay, it's kind of similar. So go to Gumtree or Craigslist and make a job. Be like, hey, I'm looking for someone to shoot a 30 second and a one minute video and use a fake email address. So still you make a new email address for the thing. And then what's gonna happen is everyone in your area is gonna start hitting you up and ask them for a quote. Be like, hey, I need a 30 second promo video. Send me your quote and website mm -hmm. for references. Now you're going to see what everybody's charging, where their price mark is at, but then also you get to see what kind of quality work that they're doing. And then you can start figuring out where is it that you're going to, that you're going to be at. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then you can start realizing who, who, who are you competing against to have a better understanding of your market. And that's what I did when I first got back to Florida. Cause I was trying to figure it out. I was like, I was in a reverse. I was like going on people's websites, trying to find out how much, 
you know, they're charging for videos. I was trying to figure out my price because I was charging like $200 for a video. So mm -hmm. was, what they were charging down here. So I was like, you know, versus me going out and looking for a bunch of people's websites on and trying to figure out the pricing, I just put out a post and had everybody come to me to, you know, figure out how much they were charging. I was like, let me reverse engineer this. Okay, cool. So like, you know, yeah, that's a, good a new world of video marketing to improve communication, leads, and sales. They're very specific about what is it that, you know, they are doing with uh, what they offer for business owner. Because this is where it comes down to it. And that was a big thing for me too, when starting out, was like, I just wanted to make a cool video, right? But I didn't read, read or didn't understand that for a business owner, this is an investment for them. And they're, they're using video to solve a business problem. So mm -hmm. what, how can you create a video that's going to help them solve a business problem? And, you know, other ways that I found to work with companies are like, I work with a coffee company that, you know, we create a video for them and, you know, they run ads for it. And the video, dude, if I, if I showed you the video, you'd be like, damn, like this, this one video has probably done like $15,000 of business for them. And it's literally a video of a coffee bag spinning on a turntable with like coffee beans falling on top of it. But it was just like, <laughs> and I mean, no. they, they needed a video that was going to help them, you know, for, to run ads in. So, uh, yeah. other, other things that I'll do if I was you is every time you're scrolling on Instagram and you get hit with an ad from a local business, check them out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'll like look to see there's a uh, face Facebook ads. I'll, I'm going to send you this video cause you know it's a lot of content as well. Uh, yeah. But Facebook, ad, go to Google, Facebook Ads Library, and you can type in somebody's business name on there, and it will show you every ad that they're running at the moment. So if you get ha if you get hit with an ad from a business, and you think that you know they're doing a photo, and you can possibly make a better photo for them, or you can do a better video, hit them up and be like, "Yo, um, check you guys out. Really like what you guys are doing. Uh, have you guys considered doing video for your ads?" I'd love to be able to talk to you about possibly creating some content for you. Because that's one thing, like businesses yeah. already out here advertising, advertising, they know the importance of it. It's a really big jump when you're trying to reach out to people that are too busy, that you know, they don't think marketing works, that they don't they don't believe in social media. You're fighting a battle against a lot of people. So by looking at the people that are already actively marketing in your area. Um, and those start building a connection with them. That's like one of the best strategies I really found to, uh, you know, help scale my business. So yeah. So I actually, I've, I've been actually experimenting with that a little bit and I'm just like still starting with it. So I'm trying to, you know, see how that plays out. But yeah, I've been doing that with, um, some, some fitness businesses that I was interested in working with. And I, you can actually check, there's also a, a section on their, on their business page. Uh -huh. um, that's like page transparency. So you can always, you can also see like, um, the ads they're running there. So yeah. I've been checking those out and a lot of businesses aren't even running ads. Um, so, you know, it's, I've been, you know, I've been trying that out and we'll see how it plays out, but yeah, I agree. It could be a interesting route to take. So you have more work than this, right? Like, is there more work that's just not on here? Um, yeah, there's a little bit more like personal passion projects. That's more on my like Instagram that, you know, I kind of feel like wasn't so appropriate because they're not really like business oriented, but, um, um, this is, this website is kind of outdated. Like I just threw this up here before I came out here and I haven't really updated it since. So I definitely need to update it. And I was actually thinking of, um, you know, seeing if I could find like a proper, web designer to to help me with this and kind of have that like as you said like really optimize it for you know one seo and um, for businesses that are looking for this type of um content so but you know that's cost a lot of money and uh you know that's for later down the line yeah uh you're in sydney is there like a specific area in sydney or is it just called sydney like is it like i mean towns and like yeah, there's some, there's regions in Sydney. So I'm in an area called Chip and Dale. Chip. Um, How do you spell that? Just like Chip and Dale? Is it like separate? Uh, uh, it's double P. E N D A L E. Next to videography, Chip and Dale. OK, 
Okay. Uh, corporate video production animation company. One million, it's not too bad. Um, oh, so what I was gonna tell you is, so I think, you know, showing a little bit more of your uh, variety of work, like the, I think having some sort of interview style stuff in your website, it's great to have because that's where, you know, a lot of corporate, a lot of the corporate work comes from. But I was gonna tell you is what I did on my website is I took my, uh, the content, the video that I made for them, and I made a case study for, to show other dentists. So like, you know, client name, budget, category, length, the results, solution, challenge, project overview, some behind the scenes, and then some like screenshots of like, you know, the kind of engagement that it has. So what I'll do in your situation is put together a case study on this project of like, hey, we created seven pieces of content of between video and photo, and then look at their engagement that they had on their page. And if you have a good relationship with them, ask them like, hey, how did like, you know, if you had to put a number on this, you know, did you like, did you see a three act, a three X and like signups with the videos, like try to get some sort of number from them that you yeah. can add to the case study of like, you know, this invested, this investment, they're able to two X their, you know, investment into the video. So I'll kind mm -hmm. of create, you know, and try to create a package for them. Even if it's like, you know, a three month package, like, Hey, it's going to be, you know, a thousand dollars a month, three, three month project. They were going to come in. I'll come in, you know, once a month for eight hours. This is what I started doing now for a lot of businesses is I'll either mm -hmm. offer, I'll put them on a retainer. Then either offer them one eight hour shoot a month or two, four hour shoots a month. Um, and that's where I'll come in to shoot content for you. The whole like coming every week for one hour or two hours, it's just not scalable because like, you know, even if you're there for one hour, you got to set up every week to go there, then you got to come back. So you really end up spending three to four hours on a one hour job, right? It doesn't make sense. So yeah. you want to, so like, I'll try to break it up in that sense of like, Hey, either one hour full day shoot or two or two, four hour shoots, but I'll create, some sort of case study with this stuff to be able to start presenting to gems. And then mm -hmm. from there, I'll kind of reverse engineer the Chippendale Australia gems. 12 boxing gym, three hypoletic website. See, the other thing too, like another a lot of popular videos right now, what I've been seeing for a lot of gyms is doing a health safety video about what the, the gyms are doing for, um, let me see if I see this one. Yeah, like COVID safe, COVID exactly. safe, like explainer videos. Is there a way for me to post company jobs thing? I thought I saved one. I'm so bad at LinkedIn. <laughs> Me too, man. Post activities. Thought I had saved it. Uh, health language. Events pages hashtags. All right, if I find it, I'll send it to you. But I saw somebody in yeah, like, nice. England that um, they did a really good, you know, fitness, you know, type video thing for their gym. So the fact that they're mm -hmm. doing something about it just helps you, um, you know, push this to them. So in this mm -hmm. end, bro, is this a gym or is it like they just sell fucking equipment? Get in, get in, get fit, get on. I think you. it is a gym. Yeah, I, I think I've seen this before. Okay, so then like I'll go to their YouTube, right? Do they have video on here? Leg, arm, course. They've been doing some, oh, it's a full on workout. Okay. Yeah. 47 subscribers. I mean, they, to me, like, they see the, the importance of video here, right? So two mm -hmm. years ago, they made a video, they're doing all these different things. I'll try hollering at these people, you know what I mean? Figure out, you know, 
if they would be interested in doing something. And that's your thing too. Like when you're starting out and as a conversation with somebody else, like when you're trying to get your foot in the door and you, you don't have clients and things like that, like you got to do what you got to do to get paid, bro. And yeah, you know, I, I worked for, you know, sometimes nothing. So I'm able to show my next client that project that I've done. Cause it's, you know, one thing to show them something. It's one thing to tell them to just take a shot with you and they don't even know if you're good or not. Yeah. Um, so what else do I have here? Have, uh, August 3rd, our memorizations. You know what I mean? Like they're doing, they're active on social media in the sense. Like to me, this would be mm -hmm. somebody that, you know, I'll try to start building some sort of relationship with. And I'll kind of just go down the line of just like, you know, working at the businesses um, on here. Cause like if you have gym stuff, then go after, you know, gym. I think that's the best way for you to, uh, be able to approach people because you already have the work. Yeah, for sure. Jets. Yeah. So I actually, I actually been doing some, so as you mentioned before, like I do actually have a case study okay. um, and it's not like apparent on my website, but I have some of the numbers and I've, when I first started reaching out to companies, I was using that as my kind of package and being like, Hey, um, I did this video marketing campaign for this last business. Um, here are the results. You know, if you're interested in learning more, like, let me know. And that kind of got the conversation going for some people. Um, but then it just, I guess it kind of slowly just faded off. I guess it's my sales process. I got to brush that up a little bit. And that's why I'm like consuming a lot of your content and the future content. Um, but you know, that's something <laughs> you know, not, not everyone can go in and do value based pricing straight off the bat, you know, and I still and, struggle with that, man. It's not, it's, it's definitely not, it's really hard, especially when you're starting out because like, like you're coming in trying to charge 500 to a thousand dollars for video and then you're trying to have this conversation with them about value-based pricing there's a huge disconnect right but when you're talking mm. to a client that's spending five to ten thousand dollars on a project they're already investing a good sum of money that having that kind of conversation makes sense so it's yeah. always one of those things to read them out the other thing that i recommend you to do is start writing now or if you still have the emails look at the emails of everyone that you emailed. I don't know if you're like changing up the script and stuff like that, but like I'll go back and start looking at your data and be like, okay, which emails led to a further conversation? Where did these conversations let, like stop working? And then, you know, you need to have something to go off of. So you yeah. just, when you reach out to a business, like what is your email script? Are you doing it through Instagram? Like what's the situation? Um, a bit of both. So, most of my leads that I got um, from that approach was from email. So I've been just doing like AIDA in my email. So I, I, I interest them with a hook and then throughout the body, I keep them interested and then just like tell them my results and then have a little call to action. Um, nothing too salesy. And I kind of like that approach and I feel like that, you know, that got people interested. So it's been working from a cold approach standpoint. Um, but you know, I just, it's volume, I guess, like, it's just, I need to put in the volume as well. Um, and I've been so kind of like skewed in all my different, like client acquisition approaches that I haven't really gotten the chance to like sit down on one and just focus on that. So I guess, you know, I need to really narrow down my approach because I'm kind of doing a bit of every, everything. Like I'm trying that lost leader approach, like reaching out to businesses, being like, uh, basically like offering free work or a discounted work um in exchange for like you know some referrals um or even a video testimonial so i'm just experimenting with a bunch of stuff um but i definitely feel like i need to narrow down my approach so um yeah i definitely think that 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 kind of uh email campaign works so i'll definitely look back at that and check the data because that's one thing i don't do is like i don't really go back and be like oh what went wrong here i'm like okay that's the end of the story move on to the next so I yeah. guess I really need to improve on that. And follow up, man. It's like, I'll tell you what, a lot of business is lost in not following up with people because like business owners get busy, especially right now with everything that's happening. So like what we have is a three email sequence, right? So the way that I do it is like, I would have, you know, some sort of, I guess, hook on the, the, I can't even think right now, the headline or the title of the email. 
Yeah. So, and I've been using like an emoji with like COVID-19 video. I, I've been doing research and from what I've seen, like having an emoji in your, um, how long have you, is it a headline? I can't even think. Right subject, now. subject line. Subject line, gosh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So subject line <laughs> really helps uh, the click-through rate. But the way that we do it, it's like, um, it'd be like, hey, John, my name's Rodrigo. Uh, love what you guys have been doing on your social media with all the content that you guys are posting. Awesome job. Hmm. I'm a producer at Tasker Studios where we help local businesses like dentists get new patients through video marketing. We had some really awesome success with our clients like River Bend Dentistry and Palms Dental. And I'll love to find out this is something we're interested in talking to further. And that's okay. it. I mean, I'll try to open a conversation. I sent out the email. And that's the other thing too. Do you have any email so like tracking software? Yeah, I use Obspot, the, the oh, yeah. extension. Awesome. Yeah. You're, you're so ahead of the game, man. So send out the email, track the email, you find out if they're open or not, and you can check if they open it up. If they open it, call back in two days if you, you don't hear back from them. And just be like, mm. hey, uh, is John there? Don't like, hey, can I speak to Mr. Da -da -da -da? This is, you know, right yeah. now. You just be like, hey, is John there? It's Rodrigo. I'm expecting your call. Like, yes, yeah, send me an email. Like, call them like you're calling your yeah. phone. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah, got yeah. And, you know, if they don't answer, then you send another email. You'd be like, hey, John, try calling you back today. Let me know if it makes sense versus scheduling the time. I would love to connect with you, talk more about your marketing. Then okay. You call back again. They don't, you don't hear from gotcha. And then the so last. So you're like, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry, go ahead. So you're like following up like multiple times in like, say, a week, right? In a matter of two weeks. In a matter of two weeks, okay. And that's so how many How many times approximately are you following five up? Five times. You're gonna follow five up. times. Yeah. Okay. So, gotcha. three, so it's. Overall, it's three emails and two phone calls. So it goes like, hey, intro. Hey, I haven't heard from you. I just want to check in, make sure you got my email. Um, hey, I tried calling you, haven't heard from you. Can we book a time to talk? Does this make sense? Call back again, be like, hey, try calling you a couple times, haven't been able to get a hold of you. And then the last one is be like, hey, John, I try to get a hold of you either at this point if I don't hear back from somebody. They're either too busy or this is something that they're not interested in. You know, mm -hmm. if you ever change your mind, here's my cell phone number. I'll love to be able to work with you at some point. And I'll okay. leave it at that. But you okay. got to follow up, right? Because it, it, it's, yeah. um, I mean, the other thing too, when you are trying to get these phone calls or, you know, like your goal from that phone call is to get a meeting with that person, right? It's not mm -hmm. to set up another meeting to talk about something else. And it's one of those things when you are having these phone calls, like you have to be prepared. Don't like, what are the next steps? Cause they're going to ask you about pricing. They're going to ask you for all these things. You have to be able to answer any of those questions that they might have for you to be like, Hey, so what do we need to do to close a deal today? Well, I need this, this and that. Great. So if I provide you those things, I can send you an invoice and agreement for a thousand dollars. Yes. Bam. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to mm. set up, you don't want to set up a five stage call to close the deal for like, you know, for a small amount of money. So your goal is yeah. to minimize the whole transaction with them and get them to sign or pay you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So are you, are you using like proposals and stuff? Or are you trying to like close on the call and like send the invoice over as soon so as you can? If I have a conversation with them and they're already telling me like we talked about, cause usually, so like, that video, if you saw one of the phone, that phone call that I did with that lady, I had a conversation with her over the phone. We talked about price. I sent her an email to let her know, be like, hey, we discussed the video's gonna be, you know, two grand. She's like, yes, yeah, correct. Here is my agree my agreement and proposal is one form. So oh, like, okay. So like gotcha. my proposal is up top, which would be like, Tasca Studios will shoot one video, 30 seconds for this company. The video will include, you know, lifestyle shots of people drinking and having fun, consuming beer. And these are, this is what you're gonna get with that video. And it'd be like, you know, 30 second video, half day shoot, music licensing, video editing, basic motion graphics. 
and then the yeah. price there, and then underneath that, my agreement with everything on it. I want to minimize, like if I don't have to send you a proposal, if you already talked about that we are both in agreement, there's no reason yeah. for you to send your proposal. I'm just gonna send you the agreement for you to get signed on. Cause like the more points of interaction that, that you create between getting signed or getting paid, the higher chances are of you not closing that deal. Cause shit happens. You know? yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You took too long, you sent them a proposal. The, like we had a shoot that somebody else's, like the lawyer, the friends of the lawyer that we were shooting for his, buddy's son did video too and that up like i lost like a ten thousand dollar project because like you know they knew somebody because we took too long to get this stuff signed so it's yeah like, you were signed you sent that over right away do not hesitate yeah you're literally describing one of the one of the <laughs> recent interactions i had with a potential client i was like i sent them a proposal i was like i didn't even be like yo let's schedule a call i'll walk you through this i was like i sent them a pro proposal and i was like let me know what you think couple of days pass. I'm like, don't hear it for them. I'm like, Hey guys, like, let me know what you think again, follow up, nothing heard. And they're like, come back. Hey, sorry for the delay. Um, we actually found out that our PR agency that we work with can do some of this stuff in house. And I was like, ah, so yeah, I agree. I think that's really important. That's one thing I learned is like to keep that momentum in the sales process. Once you like lose it, it's like done because they have time to shop around and stuff. Right. So it is a um, market. Yeah. So that's definitely something I need to tighten up is that, is that sales process. Um, are you using like something like go sign or docu sign or something like that? Um, no, but I'm looking into it. So previously I did just like PDFs with the e-signature and stuff, but I'm it looking into docu sign. Yeah. Yeah. So like anything that you could do to be able to sign, to have them sign electronically, like you, you need to make it as simple as possible for them. But the other mm. thing too, you can't sit down and have to write a custom proposal for every client that you talk to. Like, yeah, it's going to kill you. Right. So like we pretty much figured out our template for my business that like, I know in the beginning, I just got to change the name. I got to change how many videos they are going to get. Have to shoot who my point of contact is, how much are they going to pay? And like, that is it. You know what I mean? Like our project yeah. scope, our agreement is always the same. I, I need to get the proposal done in less than five minutes. If it's over five minutes, it's taking too long. And then I never yeah. send out a proposal or agree, agreement. Like I will literally have, you know, I'll have the conversation with them and then mm -hmm. I'll send them a quick email. Like, Hey John, it's great talking to you today. Basically we discussed, so just want to make sure I get this for agreement. We are agreeing on $2,000 for a 30 second commercial. Is that correct? Yes. Great. Says mm -hmm. yes. I emailed them the link to everything. Oh, like mm -hmm. under my email, I'll have the link to my QuickBooks and the link to where they can sign online in one email. I don't want to crowd their email with, I don't want to send them an email to be like, Hey, thank you. I want to email you back. And then you email them an agreement and then you email them, you know, uh, the invoice. You want to minimize all those things. You want to make their life super easy. You don't want to crowd their inbox. Uh, that's okay. something that, like worked really well for us. Okay, got you. And just a quick question about like your actual agreement. Um, I've been hearing a lot of different opinions on this, um, but it's about ownership of deliverables. Like, so for me right now, from what I've seen is like, um, ownership of deliverables remains, deliverables remains with the, with the freelancer. Right. And then, um, if the, if the client wants you know ownership or rights to use that deliverable then you charge an extra fee like how do you how would you do it um for your business it depends on the client um okay. you know what i mean so in that situation we we just close a fairly large deal with a really big client and part of their terms is we want all the b-roll you can have all the b-roll you're paying me more than what i want you're making my life super easy i will give you all the b-roll that you want we had a discussion before you know we sign the paperwork the problem okay. is when you don't have this discussion with the business owner or with the agency and then they're like hey we're paying you for this and then we want all the raw footage then that's a different conversation so we have it in our agreement be like hey if you're hiring us for a 30 second video you're entitled to the 30 second video mm -hmm. if you want all the raw footage it's going to be an extra a thousand dollars and we're going to give you going to give it to you on a hard drive 
all categorized so it makes it very easy for you to do it. And then they're either gonna tell you yes or no that they're like, hey, I don't want a thousand dollars. Like, okay, well I could do it for 500 bucks. And be like, no, we want it or we're not shooting with you. Then you have to make that decision, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's one of those things that, like, when you're in a situation that you're able to bargain and make those decisions with the clients, then you make those decisions with the clients. It's one of those things when you're begging them to work with you and you're trying to do something for like a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, whatever the situation is. And then you'd be like, no, I, I'm going to charge you extra for all this raw footage. It's one of those things that that relationship is going to be torn between you and them. They're yeah. Probably gonna work with you again. So it's one of those things that like when it makes sense, do it. And when it doesn't, mm. you know, then don't like if I'm working with another agency, I'm going to charge them, you know, for the footage if they want it, because I know that they're already charging a client more money and I know that they're going to profit from, from that as well. So, but I have that in my agreement. So when the question does come up and be like, yo, you sign the paperwork, like, listen, I like you. We normally charge a thousand dollars. I could do it for 500 bucks. Or mm -hmm. the other way that you could do it is, um, you know, have them fill out the agreement like, hey, I'll give you the footage, but I have the right to use this footage however I want, and I'm probably gonna put it on stock sites as well. So if I'm gonna shoot this and you want the footage, but like you gotta have the conversation before it happens. When, like, when you try to have this conversation with them after the money's been exchanged, after yeah. it's done, it's gonna be like, you're, you're better off giving them the footage because if you don't, they're never gonna work with you again. And I, I, I yeah. mean, it's taken the past. Like, it's one of those things. I'd rather keep them happy if it's an awesome client and mm -hmm. you know, be able to work with them. Unless like you really need the money, then you're gonna you're gonna get that money from them. They'll pay you a thousand dollars, but they're never gonna work with you again. I'm like, what is what is it more worth it for you? Like, I have another client that I gave her all the raw footage, but she still calls me to edit all this stuff for her. She just wants it, and, you know. And when you're a brand yeah. new starting out. Having that stuff is it's so key. And I've worked on so many different projects with businesses that, you know, they had really good footage. I'm like, hey, can we have access to that? Like, I'd love to edit something for you. Like this project that we're working on, if I have those things, they could be like, no, like I can't get a hold of my videographer or this and that. So like being in a situation where a lot of people are telling business owners no, be the person that tells them yes. Like, you know, I didn't start charging uh, people for their footage. The, and, until this past year because we started doing bigger commercial work and I started to leverage on that because like, you know, I am, we're shooting, you know, 50 gigs of footage and stuff like that. You know, there's storage that goes with all these different things or, you know, I'll let them know up front, like, Hey, do you want the raw footage? I could put it in a hard drive for you. It is going to be an extra, you know, 750 bucks or a thousand dollars. Just have that conversation with them. And then if you're just starting out, Honestly, I'll give it to them for free. If I know I'm gonna do nothing with it, like if it's some talking head stuff that like I'm never gonna use, yo, take it. You know what I mean? Like I'd rather have <laughs> yeah. you happy that like, oh my god, we actually got all this raw footage from them. Everybody else told us no. This guy told us yes. They're gonna, you know, you're gonna stand out. So I think it really comes down to like figuring out like is that yeah. worth it for you or not? Okay, gotcha. So just like nurture the relationship is really the priority. Yeah. To me, that I rather nurture a relationship and have you know a client be happy with me than have a client be like, yeah, like you know we did this project with them and then they're trying to charge us all this extra money from them. I'm gonna find someone mm. else. I don't fucking I'm like what is it? so for footage now. Yeah. Now the footage is in my hard drive. I'm never gonna use it, and now I just lost a client. That sounds like pretty bad, <laughs> right? Like yeah, for sure. So for sure. That's how yeah, that. All right. I, I mean, I don't know how much time we have left, but I guess I like questions, man. Keep going, man. This, I, I can do this shit all day, bro. <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, for the for the YouTube. Um, well, I guess one thing um, I I kind of want to hear more about that I haven't heard a lot about on your on your um, YouTube channel is like, what's it like being in that future program? I know you like kind of alluded to it at the beginning, but like. What's it like? Have you got some like crazy stories uh, or like any big lessons you've learned from that group or Chris Doe in particular? Like, um, I think to me the biggest crazy, I mean the biggest crazy story for me was 
so like I came across Chris Doe because I saw that video that he did about like, oh, you want a you want a logo for five hundred bucks, and they're like, why not somebody does it for fifty? Then he's like, okay, well then hire somebody else that does it for fifty. But if you want to yeah. manage them and do all these different rounds of revisions, then you go ahead and you pay that. Like I thought you're a business owner, not a project manager. I was like, yo, who the fuck is this dude? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like yeah, I've never heard this shit before. He's like, but if you want somebody that's gonna get it done right and then you're gonna be ready for you in a week, I could do it for five hundred bucks. It's like, damn, bro, it's like this is dope. So like anything yeah. else, man, you know, I uh, like, you know, start consuming his content, this and that. And, you know, I went out to an event that he did at the art center. Um, I got the chance to like meet with him like very briefly. I almost didn't even meet him. I like went there. I didn't know anybody. I literally flew there by myself. I was there for three days and flew back. Yeah. Um, but I was about to leave. And I was like, fuck, I drove all the way to California. I'm out here in this freaking hills. And like, I drove to this event in Pasadena. I'm not even going to say hi to him. So like, got to say hi, whatever. <laughs> um, and then I think like three months later, he like posts something that he's going to start doing. Um, he's like, hey, I'm going to start this new workshop thing, pricing creativity. I was like, well, I need to learn how to price because like, I've been learning a lot from him from the free YouTube stuff. So if he's yeah. gonna, like a workshop like 500 bucks for like a four hours of chris i'm like shit chris charges a thousand dollars an hour to do coaching if he's gonna do a workshop for four hours for 500 bucks like that's like you know no brainer yeah no brainer for me so flew back out there i get to the future and i walk in and literally bro i thought i was gonna be like a freaking apple commercial there's only (laughs) two desks and two chairs two white desks two white chairs and then a yeah. whiteboard there. And I'm just like, yo, what the fuck? Cause like no one else here. <laughs> and then uh, Chris like walks in and then he's like, he's like, oh, I just saw you on YouTube. I was like, what? I'm like, what the <laughs> like, like, Cause like, I guess we're editing the video from that workshop. And I had like asked a question and they're like reviewing it. And like, yeah. I was like, oh, I saw you on YouTube. I was like, what Chris you <laughs> So anyways, um, the workshop's about to start, the other kids show up, and then, like, Chris is like, yeah, so, um, you guys are the only two people that, sh- that signed up for the workshop, so, like, whatever you guys want to learn today, like, let me know, and, like, we got into the whole pricing stuff, but, like, that four-hour workshop ended up being, like, an eight-hour workshop, like, we went out to lunch with Chris, we went out to go, like, grab tea with him, it was, like, dude, it was, like, just mind-blowing for me, because, you know, just, like, when it, like, he changed my business, bro, so my second, like when I came across him, I was like my first year of business, I was like very heavy into Gary V. Second year it was Christo. And in my second year of business, I went from forty three thousand dollars to ninety thousand dollars. And that was just by being able to like Damn. have educated conversation. I was doing the exact same amount of work, but I was just yeah. able to tell a client, like, yo, if you want that, it's twenty five hundred dollars versus that a thousand dollars. And that was such a big difference, dude, because I was still doing the same amount of work, but just being able to have the conversation, like, hey, it's 2,500 bucks, or it's $3,000. I just felt confident yeah. with that. So through that, you know, after that workshop, and after I was like, man, I'm making money from what I'm learning from him. And at this point, I had consumed every single piece of content. Like, I'm like, yeah. back to like the archives and like 2014, like every video yeah. that we put out, I watched, I was like, okay, I reached the limit of like, there's nothing else that I can consume on YouTube from them. I was like, let me get into the pro group. Mm-hmm. So I ended up joining the pro group and then um, Chris ended up doing that same workshop in Miami. And when he's in Miami, he's like, he's like, I'm like, bro, if you need anything while you're here, let me know. He's like, Hey, do you want to come to the workshop for free? Um, be my guest. I was like, fuck yeah <laughs> uh, so like he was just like you know i helped him take i took some photos for him and like you no know, took some notes about his presentation because he was like he's about to go on tour to do this and he's like hey yeah. can you read the room for me let me know where the things like yeah you know whatever and i think that's like when i finally you know got into you know on his radar and then he had other events in uh la and i flew out to that and just like the whole community of people like they're just so supportive because it's a lot of people that are either going through the same thing, people that have gone through the same thing, and they're like, but there's people that they're like working like $500,000 projects with like huge corporations. And you're like, oh, like I had a project that, it was the biggest project ever. It was supposed to be 
the client told me it was a million dollar budget, bro. I was like, nine, it's like I have $950,000 to spend on this video. I was like, let me get some of that. Yeah, we could do that. I was like, come on. I was like, what the fuck do I do? Hit up the pro group. And like one dude is like, hey, I'm a producer. I work in a lot of, a lot of big things. Let's hop on a call. Dude walked me through everything of like what I needed to know. And it was one of those things like, you know, yeah, like I didn't get direct access to Chris to ask him something like that. But there's enough people in the group that they're knowledgeable for like when you're in a gym and you need help, that community is so strong. Like one of my best friends now is Mo which he's on a lot of the, um, you, know, you know, the the future stuff. And he's actually, yeah. we're going to be flying up to Pennsylvania next week to go shoot something together for a client. But like that community has just been so strong of like, you know, when I'm having some issues with clients and stuff, I'll reach out to Mo because he's been, you know, he's going through the same thing that I'm going. He, you know, has more access to Chris than I do. So there's a lot of things that he's gone through that I'd be like, yo, what do you think of this? And he's like, oh, I actually had to talk about this with Chris. And I don't know, mm. for me, the 150 a month is worth it, but it's one of those expenses for me. Like it made sense for me when my, when my business was doing over $80,000 for me to spend $150 a month to be able to have access to Chris on a weekly call. Cause we do the group calls every Wednesday. Mm. Sometimes Chris is on it. Sometimes it's not, but when he is, he's like, you guys got any questions? I'd be like, yo, Chris, uh, I have a question about this. And he'd be like, yeah, sure. Like, you know, he'll, he'll help you with that. Yeah. Versus me trying to book him for like $1,000. <laughs> yeah. you know, sometimes I don't need, you know, I don't need an hour of his time. I just have this one particular problem that yeah. I can probably, if he doesn't answer it, then I'll get it from somebody else. So like for me, it makes sense. It's an awesome community that, you know, mm. I'm very fortunate to be part of. Yeah, I mean, like, even for someone that's not necessarily making, like, 80K a year, um, even, like, sacrificing some stuff in their lifestyle, like, 150 a month, can they can easily make room for that. And, like, if that's going to grow their business, like, especially for me, I was looking at Future Pro Group for a bit as well. Like, if that's going to help me grow my business and having the access to that community, then, you know, like, why not? Like, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, is it, is, so is Future, is the Future Pro Group, is, it's online and um access to these workshops in in la yeah so they'll do well we'll see how that goes because we actually had one plan for november that possibly is getting postponed but yeah. we were doing quarterly meetups before which are dope um okay. like everybody gets like people flying in from like all over the world bro it's, it's so great <laughs> um so there's the the weekly calls on Wednesdays, there's a bunch of subgroups um, that are created within there. So like Matthew and Cena, he's in charge of the future YouTube pro group and there, there's a bunch of different people. Okay. And then you get access to all the archived pro group calls. Um, to be honest with you, I've never looked at through the archived pro calls. I never, yeah. I, like, I don't take advantage of it. Literally the only thing that I, say take advantage of is being able to get on a call on Wednesdays and some Wednesdays I don't even go you know I'll miss the call because sometimes they do speakers like they did one two weeks ago about like Instagram carousel to have like David Tallis on there shout out to mm. them. you know for me I'm gonna make it a carousel like I, I just don't care about like I know there's could be some insightful insightful things in there but for me like it just didn't make sense so, like yeah if that one but the biggest thing for you is if you've not consumed all the free stuff that they have on their YouTube channel right now, then don't get the paid version of it because mm. a lot of that stuff is stuff that's already been covered for free. So like, it's one thing for us to yeah. have a conversation with Chris and we're trying to do a value-based pricing, you know, um, role play and you don't really understand that or you never seen the videos about how they do it. You're not going to get the full advantage of the actual, actually being in the group. So. Yeah. That's like the biggest thing I'll tell somebody. Like if you're gonna do it in the group, make sure you watch all the school stuff with Jose Caballera. Like mm. I deep into a lot of the content, a lot of the old live streams about like the ask me anything. There's like some gems in there, bro. Um, yeah. So that's where I'll tell somebody to start at. And then, you know, when you feel like like there's nothing left for me to consume, then I'll join the mm. pro group. Unless you yeah, join totally. the pro group, then like join the pro group. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm like, I'm, I would say I'm like 60% through Chris's content. So probably need to dive deeper into that stuff. But yeah, man.
Cool. I mean, that's pretty much all the questions I had for you for now. Yep. Um, but thank you so much for taking the time and holding yeah, the call. That was really helpful. For sure. I'm actually, yeah. so, I, so I found you because, uh, where is it, Learn Filmmaking had featured your, uh, one of your videos? Like somebody had featured, somebody reposted one of your videos. Yeah, so um, that's actually the video that got me all my followers. I did like this Coca-Cola spot commercial with yeah. my iPhone. And I, I apparently iPhone stuff does really good on Instagram. So that thing went viral. And I'm going to be honest, like I, I saw someone else's, there's another like TikTok iPhone videographer and he did this stuff with like Red Bull cans and Coke cans. I was like, yo, I want to try this out. So it was literally me just trying it out and making my own version of it. And then that stuff went viral and I got like, you know, 1,500 followers overnight, which was pretty crazy. But yeah, a bunch of big, um accounts posted it like yeah learn film filmmaking.com uh, filmmaking and um i don't know like some photography photography site so that was a pretty cool experience so have you remade stuff like that since then um no n not really because i kind of don't want to lean in that direction of being like just the iphone videographer because We're right now with apple my paid you to do it sorry off apple paid you to do it I mean, that would be dope. <laughs> That's true. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I just like, I feel like the, f the vibe of my page right now is just like focused on what I actually do for my business. So I've been kind of like sticking to that for now. But who knows? You know, I might throw in a couple iPhone videos here and there in the future. But um, right now I'm really focusing on like trying to get those clients as opposed to like growing my Instagram to like 10k and stuff. Dude, that's I feel you on that. I mean that's the one thing too. I'm actually the next call about to get on to my buddy. Yeah. I'm actually I'm, I'm gonna plug you in with him because um um <laughs> I'm gonna plug you in with him because he's actually in Sydney. He's into video and stuff like that too. So no I know sometimes he's always looking for, uh, for help and things like that. But he was just telling me about like, he's like, yo, you got to get on TikTok with the stuff that you're doing to be able to get more followers in. And I'm like, bro, I feel that because like right now, like, you know, I, I am trying to, I'm trying to push my YouTube. I'm trying to sell my online contracts and stuff like that. But like at the end of the day, like my main focus is to grow my, like if like followers are great, but like they're not paying my bills yet. Right. So for yeah, me, exactly. it's like, yo. I got to go make some TikTok videos versus creating a case study for my business. Like I'm fucking up. Like I needed to create a case study so I could use them to show the dentist, to be able to show other business owners. Like I said, TikTok, you know, getting a bunch of TikTok followers that follow yeah. me like, yeah, it's great. But like, you know, it's not to the point right now that like I'm well off that I could put a pause in my business. So like, you definitely have the mindset and you're just keep doing what you're doing, bro. Like you got this and you said, yeah, man, like I'm passionate about helping people that are passionate about what they're doing. So when you start working on your website, you want yeah. feedback, hit me up. I love to help, man. For sure, man. Yeah. And if you ever want to do this again, I'd love to, obviously. Like, yeah, dude, whenever you're that, on, yeah. you got questions, like you're free to, I'm giving you permission, hit me up. Like if you get stuck with a client that you're like, Hey, I'm not sure what to reply to them that type of scenario hit me up cool awesome man thank you so much that means a lot take care man all right man have a good one